might have been a sound effect, might have been a clip of music. I was just laughing before I started recording. I tried recording the beginning to this one before, and I came up with a string of gibberish. So, thumbs up for that. Howdy, 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 nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends, and welcome to this brand new day. Fan on in the window, of course. Door open with a empty soda bottle holding it open a crack and then a bag of sand against it to keep it from getting open because little Amelia, my very aging pet, she's 20 years old, coming up on more. She keeps trying to get out and that's not good right now at her age. So, yay, thumbs up for that. Anyway, I hope your day is good. I am, uh, it's not good. And it's worrying as well. This arm, of course, hurts. My shoulder up here really hurts. It feels muscular and some of it might be because it also hurts on this. Ah, it also hurts on this side in a hopefully muscular way. So both of my arms are really hurting. I'm still going to be waving them around in the air like I just don't care because I have decades of muscle memory of talking with my hands versus just this morning my shoulders started to hurt. So I'm going to be doing things, it's going to hurt, and I'm going to go, ah, afterward. So thumbs up for that. Now there's a reason I'm going to talk about this one early. I went on my walkies to Walmart. Now, if I'm not feeling really dizzy, or I don't, if I'm not gonna buy anything that I need to carry that's heavy, I will just walk. I'll take a risk, because especially with taking gabapentin, I am more of a fall risk. Because of my spinal damage, I have neuropathy in my legs, and that means sometimes they just don't work right and my right leg especially will just spike into the ground <sighs> spike into the ground and then I fall. Gabapentin makes me dizzy so add that to it it is a risk to go walking on just my own two legs but last night I just went walkies on my own two legs up to Walmart and I hadn't been planning on buying anything except maybe a snack or some such. I went to price the bins, the plastic bins, and they had a plastic bin, a set of plastic bins, on clearance slash rollout, you know, so it's a little bit cheaper. But they're still between 15 to 20 bucks for a halfway decent tub. I figured, yeah, you know, I'm probably going to have to take a bus for this. But, but, I picked one up and I checked how heavy they are. And plastic tubs aren't heavy. I mean, they're plastic, they probably weigh like, what, two, three, five pounds? I mean, they're not, they're not nothing, but they're light, comparatively. And then I checked the lid, and I was like, I'm thinking to myself, I could probably carry this, but if I can't carry it, I'd be halfway home, and what would I do if I can't? But I might be able to, and I waited, and then I said, I'm going to risk it, and I bought a plastic tub. Again, it is not heavy. I was able to carry a little bag with like a soda and my safety vest in it and the larger plastic tub. And on this side, I carry, ah, I carried the lid and, ah, oh God. And I also carried another thing with that of some snacks. It wasn't heavy. It's bulky and awkward and this arm carried the lid and also uh, it pushed in on here and the nerves inside here didn't like that but this part I don't well I mean I do know why the nerves coming through here are getting compressed so yay but oh this arm is not good today uh, and this arm is not good so yeah I've taken all sorts of meds and joy but still, I got another plastic bin, and if I go up there again to Walmart today, I'll probably buy another plastic bin. That'll be the last one that I can afford. 
Uh, hopefully, it'll be uh, one that's really the only one I need. In some cases, I have things like the plastic things that you can put. Chests of drawers made of plastic, and they have the plastic frame, so you gotta be careful. But I got one over here that's filled with like uh, controllers, some discs, and stuff like that. A, a container like that, I don't really need to empty out. If I want to keep it, I just gotta tape the the drawer shut, and that's the thing I can just pick up and move. It'll be awkward to carry and such, but it'll work. I've done that in the past, so that helps. But my room is almost all boxed up, which I'll leave here. And I had been thinking, as long as I am on my social security, even if nobody gives me a hand with through my GoFundMe, which I still need to advertise, I can hopefully get everything just into a storage unit. And then I can be in a hotel room so it's not the end of the world. Now from there, hopefully, I'm still finding you know low-income housing I can move to. Because staying in a hotel room, I mean, hey, if it's like 50 bucks a day, 10 days, that's $500. And that's money I can use for other stuff. So hopefully, things will not work out that way. But even if I don't have housing, the worst thing about, I mean, in my situation, I'm disabled, I'm not supposed to carry stuff, my low back is still a mess. It doesn't hurt like it did back in the beginning. It has gotten better through time, even pain-wise. Chronic pain is largely my issue. It used to be I had to lie in bed with ice packed against my low back and it still hurt so much, I was crying. I haven't done that in a very long time. But my alarm bells, while they have calmed down, are still always screaming, saying there's something wrong, there's something wrong, why aren't you listening? So that's fun. But even with that, and even with this going on, with the damage to my arms, with the, the, not the veins, the nerves, I can still move 90% of my stuff on my own. I will just suffer horribly during and far after, but I can do it. The one thing I really can't is my bed. My large foam mattress, my two housemates moved it into the house here and one side of it got all wet and I had to like clean it off because even they couldn't fully carry it. It's that heavy that two people couldn't get it up off the ground. And then the wooden frame, because it has a large electrical mechanism, mechanical electrical mechanism, that raises the feet and the head, the frame is very heavy. Everything else I can probably do by myself over a day and then get the stuff moved into a storage unit. I uh, stated I will suffer and hopefully not lose anything through the irritation up here. So, it's bad. The freight train is running at me at 200 miles an hour, but I'm not going to be just standing on the road next to my stuff in a day is going, what do I do now? So at the very least I've got that. Hopefully, though, I'm going to be getting help. I need to call my social worker again. She hasn't called me. I don't know what's going on. Aside from maybe, and I talked about this with my therapist, my getting angry and talking over her, even though explaining I wasn't angry at her because my frustration, it could be she has said I don't have to deal with that. Boom. So I can only hope that that hasn't happened, but who knows? Thumbs up. But everything is not awful. I want to check also, yes, here's another thing. Also, my video yesterday, one of the reasons I actually went through that, one of the reasons I was dealing with the comment in such a way that I did an entire video is rigorous honesty. It took me several rehabs to get free of alcohol, like four or five. 
and finally it was a behavioral all the others were you got to get right with jesus here's the 12 steps you have to follow but the 12 steps of aa are all about you know religious stuff and nothing about dealing with your alcohol problem and they have found that if you have no if you go to nothing at all and you deal with it on your own without any support you actually stay more sober than if you go to AA. So that's not really a good group and a way to get sober. I finally ended up going into a behavioral conditioning where they said if you feel the urge to drink here are some things you can do to break that. And so there's a whole arsenal of, if you feel this, do this. And, and then asking so that you could come up with your own things. When you feel the urge to drink, what can you do to stop it? If this is happening, what can you do to stop this? If this happens, what can you do to stop this? All sorts of ways to fix your problem instead of get right with Jesus. Which, there ain't nothing wrong with religion and spirituality. There's a, per, a place for everything but that is not a good way to get sober the behavioral training worked I have been sober ever since back to trying to talk what I remember what I'm going on about but part of my staying sober is rigorous honesty because if I lie to other people then I'm gonna lie to myself and if I lie to myself I'm gonna start drinking again and if I start drinking again I am going to die. So I don't lie on purpose about things. White lies, being a human being, yeah, I do that sort of stuff. I don't, if I can not hurt somebody's feelings with a small lot white lie that is going to be inconsequential and then gone, I will do stuff like that. Or I will try to make my statements as soft as possible. Remember what I'm talking about? <laughs> oh God, I hate having ADHD. So I have to have rigorous honesty. Now, that includes with the comments that were left for me, while they were harsh and done towards what I think was a mental model that's close but not exactly me, some of the shots hit close enough that I couldn't just ignore them for the rigorous honesty part. One of the things I've talked about when I'm going on and walking and trying my fiction stuff is when I find something that hurts, that makes me cry, I really examine it hard and I think about it and I grind that knife in the open wound until hopefully I hit bone and maybe I can break the tip off in, the, in that wound and I cry as I am walking because it hurts so much. But I'm not trying to hurt myself. That is digging for wounds that hurt. Because if it hurts, I know there's infection there. So I dig it out so that it can start to heal. So some of the, there's loud noises outside. Some of these things that, I, that were talked about were close enough that I had to examine them closely because I don't want to lie to anyone else or myself. So yes, I went on and paid attention to the comments, harsh and not exactly the point as they are, but they were close enough that I wanted to talk about it and have the rigorous honesty to let you know what's going on. Also on that front, had a nice talk with my sister when I called her last night with you know, we talked about my issues, we talked about her issues, we talked about stuff about her kids and the you know, grandkids and all that, because she's 56, she's only four years younger than me. She's had bad luck as well. I mean, I talk about my life being bad. She has had pregnancy-related diabetes ever since she had children from her very first child. She's on an insulin pump and her blood sugars are barely controlled. So she's struggling with her issues. But she has had a fairly successful life, but she talks about 
told me and talked about, you know, she struggles with things like OCD and the like. We had different fathers. We had the same mother and we both have issues and she's able to recognize some of the autistic behaviors in some of her children and grandchildren. So it was in our mother, which not a bad thing. You know, it's all in the range of human variation. Human existence is a bell curve. You have those that are perfect and those that are completely broken. Most people are right here, but so there are some people that are on this part of it. And I'm not too far toward this outside edge because I'm high functioning autistic which, again, as a paraphrase for your life, what I read on this one thing that came down to, you can live independently if you are high-functioning autistic, but your life will be a long, drawn-out, slow-motion, flaming car wreck. And when I look over my shoulders at my independent life that I have lived, it has been, it is, and will likely continue to be a long, drawn-out, slow-motion, flaming car wreck. So yay, thumbs up on that. What else do I have over here? Uh, the only thing really is, well, this one I'm gonna talk about because I've talked about Senator Jane Claren and his situation quite a bit, but back to the other setting, inside, outside, razor's edge, cryptid stuff. I've mentioned how one of the, checking my time, because I also do like to keep these around 20 minutes, and yesterday's 30 minute one was like, oh my gosh, so I understand if nobody watched, so trying to keep these short. I had talked about, I figured there is a cosmic horror event that will happen where a sparkle of light in the sky happens, and then everything within a 43 miles, 23 miles, and then 43 here to here, gets drawn up and just smushed up into a ball, a shiny ball from like gravity, whatever, up above. Everybody is ground up that was there, and part of it was a city, part of it was not, and then the ball is just hanging in the air for some time, to the point that they have people examining like the, the divot. It's a huge, really smooth, hole where everything used to be but at some indeterminate point later when there are people down in there that ball starts to sparkle and there is a magenta wham and then where the bowl used to be is now land now I've been struggling to figure what would be in there I was thinking hey maybe it's like the indeterminate uh, space like in you know the razor's edge but what I think is more interesting and more actually cosmic horror like is inside of there there is an abandoned city but it's not just a static thing it's slowly drifting at 300 meters per day from say east to west so eventually what is over here is going to drift out this side and there's more abandoned city that drifts in it's like a microscope or a a focus but the focus is actual physical land this stuff drifts in from nowhere on this side and then drifts outward on that side there is evidence that all this stuff used to be uh, not abandoned you know fresh food automobiles crashes the equivalent of automobiles it is a different place but evidence that it was lived in possibly up to the point that it drifted into here. Now there are feral and savage human beings, not many. There are fantastical monsters and creatures, not many. And there are very powerful beings and some strange artifacts, not many, but they are there. It is incredibly dangerous to be inside of it, but it's also worth it because oh my gosh the stuff that you can get out of there a lot of it is just junk like oh i picked up some toilet paper while i was in on the inside there yay and that's all you get for your months of study but some really good things come out 
so that that spotlight is drifting through this city. I mean, if you're in the middle, it takes you know however long at 300 meters to de per day to travel. If you're at the other end, you can be standing at the very edge watching it all drift by without being able to reach out and touch it. So it's a strange little place there. Thumbs up for that. I would have changed the names up there, but my gosh, both of my arms are killing me today. Hopefully the meds are going to kick in here real soon. Thank you each and every one of my Patreon patrons. Without your help, I am my aging pet would be hosed once again like Christmas monkeys. And if you've ever seen the documentaries, a Christmas monkey is the worst kind of way to be hosed. Those poor monkeys. So thank you so very, very much. It is appreciated. And thank you to everybody who has donated in the past to my PayPal or my GoFundMe. Thank you so very much. Now I'm going to go through and thank however many people have left me comments in the past 24 hours. There's never many, but anything more than zero is awesome. Thumbs up and thank you. Coming to my crew room, we have Jesse Koskinen. I, I, once again, I know that Daggerfall isn't the most popular. More people have st said in comments they like Morrowind better. They like Oblivion better than Daggerfall, but... This is the best I've ever done, so I am still fixated on it. I hope you continue to enjoy. Thumbs up and thank you much. Constable Lopez, yeah, it was long. I try to keep them shorter. My apologies. Chris, greatly appreciated. Thumbs up. Thank you very much. Good to see you. We have Blue Toad, greatly appreciated, and good to see you very, very much. And J A Double Y, and that, I think, uh, maybe Yamil. But thumbs up and thank you each and every person that left me comments. Like I said, not many, so yay. But anything more than zero, once again, is greatly appreciated. Remember, like, comment, and subscribe, and, and share without spamming so that my channel maybe dies slower. Yay. So, I'm going to take it easy today, especially with this going on, oy vey, but i still got so much to do, so I guess I can't take it easy after all. <sighs> life is life. Still, do what you can do, and if you can't, well, that's okay too. Survival is important. Survival mode is important. So, until we meet again, you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side. And that is indeed a very good thing. Now, of course, I can't just end it there. I have to turn on my PlayStation controller because I'm recording this off my PlayStation camera with Share Factory on the PlayStation. My controller, I'm having to press the, the cross button several times at points. So I'm going to need a new controller soon on top of everything else. I mean, my Xbox is dead. And that sucks, because it was an Xbox One, which they don't make anymore, and i got physical discs that I want to play. You take care. <laughs> and I will see you.